Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So uh, let's now discuss lecture 4 where we are talking about types of real estate managers and their responsibility. In this particular lecture we will be dealing with different types of real estate managers and what specific responsibilities they have. So uh, let's start. So first the table of content. So in this particular class we will be discussing these topics. So let's take a look at uh, this particular table. So, we will explore various roles within the real estate management such as site management, corporate supervisory teams and portfolio managers. Additionally, we will delve into the responsibility of executive property managers, leasing agents, marketing directors and accounting professionals. We will also touch upon building engineers, facility managers and real estate executives discussing their roles in property management. Finally, we will highlight the key responsibilities of real estate managers including financial management, reporting, property maintenance and legal considerations. So before we start, let us revisit what we have done in the previous session. So in the previous session uh, or I should say in the previous two sessions, we have done uh, what are the different types of uh, real estates we are talking about. So different type of real estate, in the first lecture we discussed uh, about the, uh, the residential real estate, we talked about commercial real estate in which we specifically talked about shopping centers. Then in the next class we discussed commercial real estate in which we specifically discussed in length about the office real estate. And then we also touched upon certain other types of real estate properties such as industrial buildings. We looked at hospitality related real estate and then we looked at the mixed use development. We saw that what are the different issues which are specific to these type of properties whether it is residential. Um, which has its own unique uh, set of uh, issues. Then we have seen in commercial the office buildings, different type of classifications, how they are uh, impacting this uh, business of real estate. So for example, we saw that class A type of office buildings, uh, why they are premium, why they are uh, uh, classified as cl class A, what are the sets of what are the specific traits they have. So that was there. Then we also looked at certain specific aspect like uh, services which, of, which are there in these type of buildings. So we discussed all this in the previous two lectures on the types of real estate. Now we will see that how real estate managers manage these properties and also what are the different types of real estate managers which are there because they have their own unique sets of uh, workings which they have to do because there are we just now when we were discussing in, in previous class we were discussing that there are so many different uh, type of activities which are associated certain activities are associated with real estate management of residential buildings certain activities are associated with office buildings certain activities specifically are related to shopping centers um, uh, and uh, uh, industrial buildings. So there are different different uh, features of these types of real estate and their management requirements are also different. So uh, in this particular class we will see that how these different types are managed by the different type of real estate managers. So coming on to the types of real estate managers and their, uh, their responsibility. So, Real estate management offers a wide range of career path 
each with its own set of responsibilities and challenges. It's important to choose a role that aligns with your personality, skills and work ethics for long-term success and satisfaction. One common role in real estate management is site management, which is essential for overseeing day-to-day -day operations and ensuring resident satisfaction. So, like I said earlier, when we talk about real estate management, the real estate manager, we are not saying that there is only one specific aspect of it which needs management. Every aspect which we have discussed till now requires a specialized manager. These specialized managers are working day and night in these specific areas, whether it comes to service area managers, whether it comes to facility management. We will be discussing all that in this particular class, but you can very well understand that these real estate, different type of real estate and uh, different type of services which they are offering, they are offering so much as a career path. If somebody is looking at as uh, uh, real estate management as a career path, they have so many opportunities to look at. So, a particular role which is feasible for the, your personality, you can choose that. Uh, uh, which is uh, and something which you can stay for a very long time and it can give you a lot of success. So, we, are, we, ha we will see and uh, discuss different type of uh, managerial capabilities and uh, uh, duties which, the, which are there and then you can very well assess which is very which is more suitable to you if you are actually looking for such an area to actually build a career on. So, that is there, but one thing which is there which is common amongst among all of them is the site management because something is very clear here that the management of that office building has to be done from the site it cannot be um, overlooked this aspect cannot be overlooked that the site the presence of the uh, the manager on the site is very very essential so that is there then let's move on to the site management that is there the first thing very very crucial so so site managers play a crucial role in overseeing property operations resident interactions and maintenance task their responsibility include managing leasing activities including tenant screening a very important essential part like we discussed earlier that uh, we cannot just uh, ask you know any tenant to come and be part of our building because our building's prestige is also associated with tenants. So, tenant screening has to be there. Tenant screening is a very crucial aspect, very much has to be taken care of. So, that is there. Then lease agreement, there are different conditions of lease agreement we have discussed earlier that uh, the, when we talk about lease agreements for the commercial buildings, it has there, it has you know different uh, um, concepts, different features which are there and it has to be very well understood by the, uh, by the real estate manager. Um, so, that is there and then uh, the rent collection. So, the timely rent collection, the tenants which you chose and when they are paying the rent that has to be collected. So, the, the manager in this aspect has to take care of that. Then handling accounting tasks related to property finances including budgeting and financial reporting. So, ensuring property upkeep and maintenance by coordinating repair, inspections and cleaning services. So, regular cleaning service, so for example, there it has to be managed, it has to be well taken care of, that is there. Other services which are there, regular services which are there, so for example, service, repair, maintenance, a site management site management uh, uh, real estate manager will be definitely keeping tab on this that they are uh, taking place regularly that is very much part of your job. Then ensuring accurate records of property transactions, tenant communication and maintenance activities that is there that has to be well taken care of. So, um, when it comes to property transaction a proper record has to be maintained because uh, this is something which has to be uh, like we earlier discussed that real estate is 
uh, very well, uh, very highly regulated uh, industry. Uh, there are many sets and rules and taxation is involved. So, the proper records of the transaction has to be kept. Um, then uh, proper tenant communication. So, if we are sending any communication directly to tenants, how we are sending it? If we are sending that communication to a specific tenant or if we are sending that communication to all the tenants, the communication lines have to be very, very clear, something you have to take care of. And then maintenance activities, maintenance activities, something like we discussed that day to day activity has to be taken care by a site manager. So, ensuring compliance with local regulations, safety standards and lease agreements. Also identifying and addressing maintenance needs promptly to ensure the property remains in optimal condition. Overall site manager plays a pivotal role in ensuring the smooth operation of real estate properties and enhancing residential satisfaction. And like we discussed earlier that in all the type of our site management professions, uh, all the type of uh, real estate uh, management professions we will be looking at, site is a very crucial aspect, will be part of all the management types which we will be discussing. Then moving on to defining the corporate supervisory tree. Now what is this? So now let us see, so the corporate supervisory roles within real estate management, so we have portfolio manager. So, portfolio manager oversees a collection of properties within a real estate portfolio. They are responsible for setting investment strategies, monitoring performance and ensuring alignment with overall investment objectives of the organization. Portfolio managers play a critical role in optimizing the financial performance and growth of the portfolio. Then we have executive property manager. Executive property manager are senior executives who provide strategic directions and leadership for the entire property management operations. Then executive property managers play a key role uh, uh, which is uh, we have discussed. So while the titles may vary uh, across organizations, the role of portfolio manager and executive property manager are fundamentals to the corporate supervisory team. These individuals possess extensive experiences and expertise in real estate management, guiding the organization towards success in dynamic and competitive market. So we can understand the role of portfolio manager, the executive property managers here. Then moving on to in the uh, advisory team, specifically talking about the portfolio manager. So let us, what are the, what are the different aspects of this job. So assembling real estate assets, so portfolio managers are tasked with assembling a collection of real estate assets that align with the investment plan and objectives of the organization. They strategically select properties based on factors such as location, market trends and potential for growth. Managing multiple properties, portfolio managers oversee a diverse range of properties with a specific geographical area. They take a holistic approach to management treating the portfolio as a single entity while also addressing the unique needs and challenges of individual properties. Maximizing portfolio performance. The primary goal of a portfolio manager is to maximize the financial performance and value of the real estate portfolio. They develop and implement investment strategies, monitor market conditions and make informed decisions to optimize returns and mitigate risk. Overall, portfolio managers play a crucial role in shaping an investment strategy and success of real estate portfolios, leveraging their expertise to achieve desired outcomes in a dynamic market environment. So we have just seen earlier also that we are talking about different types of properties as part of a portfolio. So you are investing in different different portfolios as a profit uh, portfolio manager you are creating a portfolio of different properties and you will have to be very well aware of all the different aspects of the property you choose as part of the portfolio 
So that is a big, big responsibility of a portfolio manager. So like we just discussed that we have different risk which have to be taken care of. Um, there are certain uh, specific aspects of that local area. So you have to be clearly aware of the history of that area. What is the presence of present situation of that area? The areas nearby. So this is just one example. So there are many, so many different aspects uh, as a portfolio manager. Uh, because the investment of your organization in these uh, different um, different properties is being managed by you, so uh, all this will become as part of uh, will become uh, will become as part of uh, your decision regarding the investment in a certain property. So very very important crucial role of a pro pro portfolio manager. Then we come to executive property manager and primary responsibilities. So let's delve into the role. So property management oversight. So executive property managers are responsible for overseeing all aspects of property management, ensuring that operations run smoothly and profitability is maximized. They provide strategic directions and guidance to property managers to achieve organization's objective intermediary role and intermediary is between property owner and managers executive property managers serve as the main point of contact for both parties they facilitate communication address concerns and ensure that the interest of all stakeholders are represented effectively so we have to understand that when we are talking about property managers they are also uh, playing a crucial intermediary role. This intermediary role is between the owners and the managers. Now, who are these managers? There are different type of managers we discussed earlier. We will be discussing them in detail. But you can understand that executive property manager is someone who is above them, who is, bit, who is basically playing a crucial role between the owner and them. So, the decisions of executive property managers is being respected by these managers and property manager or uh, property owner has a uh, has uh, has a certain belief or has uh, imparted certain uh, specific uh, powers to executive property managers and that is why um, the person is acting as an intermediary so we have to uh, understand this then uh, so key responsibilities now so they have a executive property managers because because with the post with the authority there comes a lot of responsibilities. We will have to understand what are these responsibilities. So we have uh, meeting owner's goals, aligning uh, management strategies uh, with the objectives and expectations of property owners, uh, developing management plan, creating comprehensive plan to optimize property performance and value, implementing marketing strategies, promoting properties, to attract tenants and maximize occupancy rates. So now we have discussed this earlier also. What is this marketing strategies? So whether we, uh, so marketing strategy will is basically is a very big broad envelope in which we can uh, talk about uh, different aspects. So uh, who are we deciding as our um, uh, anchor tenant in case of shopping center? Who uh, will be part of our tenant mix, a very important decision for office buildings, industrial uh, buildings, we will be like if we are talking about warehouses, uh, like uh, what is the, uh, the, the most uh, uh, accessible road? So um, if that road, how we can promote, uh, we can promote our uh, warehouse to, uh, if there is an industry, um, you know, SEZ or if there is some nearby industries. Uh, how to you know uh, how to locate them and how to convince them to use our uh, warehouse services so there are so many things which becoming which are coming as part of the um, uh, the overall um, marketing campaign of uh, to, to be done by um, uh, by manager in case uh, in this case uh, executive property manager who will be deciding on the overall uh, strategy regarding this so very, very crucial aspect which has to be uh, taken care of here. So, uh, and then moving on to administering 
maintenance programs so ensuring that properties are well maintained and compliant with regulations so if the whoever uh, is responsible at the lower level the the official uh, of the maintenance programs the the people who are working at the site level so uh, the people who are managing them overall will be uh, reporting to executive property managers so they will have a proper program program relating to uh, how uh, the uh, maintenance will take place periodically what will be the checks what will be the the uh, regular schedules of that so that has to be taken care so uh, something which has to be decided by the executive property manager uh, very important then um, uh, coming to collecting rents another important issue because uh, when we are talking about tenants and their management another aspect is that the timely rent collection is done so managing rent collection processes and addressing any issues related to payments again something that has to be well planned well chalked out by the uh, executive property manager and their team then coming to managing expenses so monitoring and controlling expenses to maintain financial stability and profitability now this is important we have to provide the best services if we are talking about our tenants uh, and the let's take an example of a office building if you have to provide the best services to uh, all the companies which are there in our office building um, the best HV, hvac the um, the uh, the best uh, cleaning services the so many other tertiary services secondary services which are there all of them which we have to provide them as good managers but there has to be a cost constraint there has to be the cost has to be kept in mind because our budget we have to take in control so uh, coming to um, the uh, managing expenses so that has to be taken care of who will take care of that so the executive property manager will be responsible for that also then negotiating leases very very important aspect to be taken care by somebody who is very higher up and that is your executive prom property manager because uh, this negotiating lease agreement with tenant to secure favorable terms for property owners that is the task and that is a very crucial task that is if you are talking about uh, getting the best possible uh, lease uh, terms for um, our owner uh, like in because we are talking about executive property manager so that is why i said like this so if you are talking about executive property manager they are working on behalf of a owner uh, of the property they will try to maximize the lease that is their task and uh, the terms also uh, just not in the terms of monetary terms but also in terms of the other aspects of the lease which we discussed earlier that there can be various parts of the uh, lease so all of this has to be taken care by who so they will be taken care by the executive uh, property manager then communicating with stakeholders so the communication is a very crucial aspect so keeping property owners tenants and other stakeholders informed and engage so it's not just about tenants the proper communication channel which is there between the owners the managers the tenants and other um, employees who are working in a particular real estate building whether it is office uh, office building or some other type of uh, commercial building uh, a proper communication channel has to be there there should be no situation of confusion so a proper communication channel who will be responsible who will be uh, liable uh, in case of uh, something goes wrong so the the executive uh, property manager has to take care of that then mitigating risk which is very important now identifying potential risk and implementing measures to mitigating them effectively now when we are talking about um, uh, a big uh, re real estate building whether it is a shopping center or office building there can be situations where can where um, um, where uh, which which are like you know situations which are being created by um, uh, some local factors or maybe some international factors so very recently we have seen situations of covid 19 there were some spe specific aspects which were there which had to be taken care of work from home how how to properly uh, uh, and then uh, uh, earlier it was work from home uh, in the initial phases of the covid 19 but then 
uh, gradually when the opening started there were uh, certain safety measures which had to be taken care of who will be responsible for that so there were so many aspects so many government guidelines regarding that for the and they were very essential for the safeguard of all the people who will be working in that building so has to be taken care by uh, the uh, executive uh, property manager and their team so very very important so this can be uh, one area of mitigating risk other than that there can be other risk also which are financial investment but these risks have to be very well taken care by the executive property manager so then we move on to the next part which is other real estate management professions so real estate management requires team work and it involves various rewarding career opportunities so other professions in real estate management include we have leasing agents uh, we'll see as the name suggest uh, somebody who will be responsible for the leasing uh, activities uh, then we have uh, marketing directors um, we'll be um, discussing about this um, marketing related area then accounting and financial services building engineers mall managers construction managers facility managers real estate executives brokerage services and administrative personnel so you can see that we have plethora of professionals which are part of the real estate management uh, so it's not just the the executive uh, or the, um, the portfolio manager it is also about who will be responsible for the leasing who will be responsible for marketing so we have specific people we have a complete team we are talking about accounting and financial services specific people for this and then building and uh, and it's not just about accounting and financial services uh, uh, for uh, it's not generalistic financial and accounting services it's specific to our uh, real estate industry certain specific features which are there in real estate industry so person who is experienced in this area that will be responsible then building engineers mall managers construction manager something relating to the construction side of the uh, industry that also will be part of the team then facility managers somebody who will be taking care of the day to day activities we will be uh, dwelling on these uh, individually and then we have real estate executives broker services and administrative person who will be also there as part of this particular team then moving on we have leasing agent so what are the uh, duties or responsible for securing tenants for the buildings we know that the tenant mix has is very very important crucial aspect we require of course we will require in case of uh, shopping mall we will require a anchor uh, tenant we will require an ancillary tenants anchor tenant uh, selection of anchor tenant is a make or break for any particular mall so when we are deciding upon who will be the anchor tenant it can influence all the ancillary tenants also it can influence the uh, the leasing terms of other uh, ancillary tenants which will be there in the office building uh, the uh, the first movers in our building uh, if they are very reputable names if they are fortune 500 companies it can bring in more such companies the overall profile of our building will go higher the the requirement of space in our building will increase very very crucial job so responsible for securing tenants for buildings then can work for a management or brokerage firm or it can be a freelancer so leasing agent they can be part of the management team they can be part of a brokerage firm or they can be freelancer so there can be different ways in which leasing agent may work so just now we took an example of office building we took an example of uh, shopping center uh, and basically we were focusing on management team that is as the owner side they were trying to attract now if the owner doesn't have their own team how will they uh, you know avail such services so they may hire a separate management team maybe that is a specific brokerage firm they will work on their behalf so there there are multiple international brokerages which are working in the 
in multiple parts of the in various parts of the world in india also we have these industry uh, international brokerage firms which are now working and they work on the behalf of the uh, the the owner so they are acting as manager for them or there are certain freelancers also if the 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 uh, the uh, the unit you are talking about is a very localized uh, or you can say type c type b type of building office building then in that case they may go for uh, just a freelancer who will work on their behalf but it's not that the 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 scale of operation is low so the quality will also be so the quality can be very good so depending on their uh, budget they may choose for the best option available whether to hire a leasing agent whether to go with a brokerage firm or whether to go for a freelancer then the task which are included here so we have marketing of course because if you want to bring in um, uh, if you are start, so for example we we have a new building we have a new building and we want tenants to come in so we have to have you know uh, get, uh, avail services of different um, channels of uh, for marketing whether it is um, print media whether it is electronic media or whether it is local trade fairs so different ways in which you can reach uh, the suitable tenants for your building then conducting property tours so uh, these type of tours can also be conducted in different uh, you know uh, like trade fairs different uh, cities different countries if you are talking about big budget uh, uh, operations so Uh, through that also you can bring in uh, your tenants and then after that screening tenant like i said earlier um, securing tenants that is we want our building to have 100% occupancy but screening who will be there as part of our uh, overall mix of tenants that is important we cannot allow all of them because sometimes it can be a situation that if we are talking about a specific uh, tenant it may impact the suitability of other tenants to come in and open their offices in your building or open their uh, shop in, in your mall so it's not always um, uh, just a very straight forward uh, whoever will be paying the highest uh, rent it has different you know uh, layers to it because it can impact your other tenants also so the screening of tenants it is very very crucial and it is a subjective assessment it can be based on quantitative in the sense that what are the uh, the the terms of lease which are there whether they are being accepted by them or not that is there but apart from that there it has to be a qualitative judgment also that if we bring in this particular tenant if we have to reduce our uh, you know lease uh, number if we we are adjusting to our lease we are we we are open to that we are open to bargain why we are doing that we are trying to win that particular tenant for our particular building and if we are able to do that we can then of course uh, uh, go uh, and uh, you know uh, have uh, these lease negotiations further with other tenants and bring them into our building so that is a very crucial aspect and then handling lease document so uh, how the lease is prepared Uh, what are the different uh, documents relating to that they have to be properly uh, proper order they have to be there so this has to be also taken care by the leasing agent and then it requires excellent customer service skills of course it requires something which that uh, the because we are talking about lease negotiations we are talking about le- uh, we are talking about promotions promotional activity we are talking about so many uh, uh, you know pro- promotional or um, uh, front facing activities that uh, the, the lease agent agent has to be someone who can um, work on outside with work with people so it has to be a very dynamic um, uh, it, it is a very dynamic role which has to be played here then moving on to the marketing director so what are the roles so marketing director manages marketing campaigns for real estate asset so we have uh, earlier discussed various types of uh, real estate so we have discussed um, residential real estate we have talked about commercial real estate in commercial we specifically looked at shopping mall 
we looked at office buildings, we looked at industrial, we looked at um, hospital, hospitality uh, uh, buildings and we also looked at mixed uh, use buildings now which are also there in the market now. So when we are talking about uh, all these different types of um, real estate properties, we should understand that managing their marketing is also very, very crucial. Because let's say, for example, we have been discussing commercial buildings. So let's take example of real estate, uh, residential real estate buildings now. So when we are talking about uh, uh, getting, uh, um, you know, getting, uh, um, uh, like if we are freeholding, if we are selling our units in a residential building, how to do that? Uh, so for that, we need proper marketing campaign. So there, can, there are different avenues for marketing campaign for residential building. It can be social media, right? It can be uh, the different um, uh, applications, um, internet applications which are there. Through that, we can promote our building. We can promote our building through um, radio ads. We can promote our building through uh, the newspaper, the, um, the, the ads. So there are different ways in which we can promote a residential building. So then there is a specific marketing budget for that. So uh, how to get, get maximum out of our uh, this uh, management, uh, this marketing campaign that has to be dealt by a marketing director. So this is example of uh, residential buildings. What about um, office building? So office building, um, visiting different trade fairs, do, doing um, a lot of property shows, tours, and uh, meeting uh, uh, professionals from different industries, um, talking about uh, what are the different features which we are offering in our building. Uh, all this will be done by the marketing director. Uh, they may meet um, different analysts uh, and uh, they may meet uh, different um, the property brokers. So uh, through different people, the, uh, the promotion of the office building can also be done. Similarly, uh, the promotion uh, of mall, uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, you know, um, that is not just relating to uh, tenant, it can be relating to how uh, the different campaigns in that uh, mall is being promoted, how they are being uh, marketed. Because uh, events which are taking place in the mall uh, and activities which are taking place in the mall can attract footfall and when there is a higher footfall, you can have better tenants. So it is multiple layers of marketing which is there. So all this has to be um, managed by uh, uh, a marketing director or manager in a mall. So, uh, and when it comes to tenants, um, the, the, uh, the, the decision of uh, anchor tenant, the decision of um, ancillary uh, tenants, that decision also somewhere like a, uh, a marketing director is also a part of it because ultimately the marketing of that mall will be impacted. So there are ma multiple layers which has to be understood when we are talking about marketing director. So there are, there are multiple things. So then responsibility include targeting appropriate tenants, creating advertising material. So uh, this is also there that just not placing ad, how the ad actually looks, that is very, very important. So when we are talking about like what is the content which is there in our advertisement, who will be the final decider? Uh, of course, there can be a creative team which is there, but who will be the final um, decision holder uh, or decision maker or uh, about uh, what will be there in the advertising material? So that is there because uh, all these things which we are promising, we have to deliver them. If we are not delivering them, we are accountable or we can be, uh, we are accountable in courts. So that has to be very well taken care of. So it just cannot be the creative team. The marketing director also has to take a final call on the advertising material. Then maintaining model units. So sometimes, for example, uh, residential buildings, we have to um, promote uh, our units, we have to sell our unit. So we have to create certain uh, model units so that uh, the visitors, the potential buyers of our um, units can come there and visit and uh, actually see how the, uh, the final uh, units which will be purchased by them will look. So because if the under construct, it is in the under construction stage, then model units can be something which can attract 
uh, such buyers and then overseeing property signage so another essential and many times overlooked aspect is the signages of the property now this is very very crucial so the stein signages it has to be attractive enough it has to be um, uh, it has to be such a way that um, it can not only just provide information to the 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 right people the people who have like for example visitor of a mall the information is being provided to them in the right manner or not that is there but also apart from that the signage it becomes a very attractive point for the visitor so that should be there very much there in the um, uh, part of the uh, this as part of the marketing director role and then found in various settings and include uh, the marketing directors are found in various settings they include shopping malls apartment communities and office buildings so the role spans in all type of these uh, real estate uh, Um, uh, like classifications which we have seen whether it is residential office or shopping mall so the role is basically uh, uh, is required in all these buildings then we come to accounting and financial services so in the realm of real estate accounting and financial services play a crucial role in ensuring the smooth management of assets and adherence to regulatory standards the primary responsibilities of this department encompasses a range of essential functions so one for example account payable so managing the payment process for various expenses related to real estate operations ensuring timely disbursement while maintaining accurate records account receivables handling the receipt of funds from tenants or other sources tracking payments and facilitating the collecting process to maintain healthy cash flow then corporate accounting overseeing financial reporting budgeting and analysis at the corporate level to provide stakeholders with transparent insights into the financial health of the organization and then payroll service administering payroll operations for employee involving real estate management and operations ensuring accurately and timely compensation in compliance with regulatory requirements so the overarching goal of the accounting and financial service department is to ensure proper financial management transparency that is the key and compliance with regulations governing real estate operations by diligently fulfilling these responsibilities they contribute to the overall success and sustainability of real estate ventures now this is uh, like i said not just about finance and accounts it's 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 basically also something which we have to keep in mind that can impact the fines and the other associated risks which are there so very well well managed accounting and financial service team of a building can play a crucial role so it cannot be overlooked so that is there then moving on to the next that is building engineers mall managers and construction managers so maintaining uh uh these um, essential services for a particular building is important now we will see what they are actually doing so let's talk about building engineers so these professionals specialize in the maintenance and upkeep of mechanical systems within the office property so let's we have earlier also we have seen that office buildings have their specific requirement when it comes to uh, say for example hvac different services now these services these uh, services aspects of the office buildings are uh, continuously required an uninterrupted supply of electricity uh, hvac services is not just a need it is essential for the proper functioning of these uh, businesses because let's say for example electricity we have been discussing that there are so many electronic gadgets which are there uh, and with the uh, the 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 uh, the rise in um, uh, work from home 
or hybrid culture of work from home where where are some people in offices operating so internet requirement internet requirement continuous internet requirement bandwidth requirement because uh, that is there so these different types of services so many types of services which are there associated with these office buildings who are responsible for that who will look after that and the continuity which is there uh, of these services is uh, is has to be maintained so so building engineers come into that so these professionals are doing all that so their responsibilities include monitoring that the uh, the working is continuous so somebody needs to be uh, up to date uh, if there is any um, issue regarding uh, the services if there is some breakdown so uh, who will inform the the required team so somebody has to look into that so the the uh, the monitoring aspect then we have repairing so if something break down who will be the first responders for that so we're asking the team to respond and to repair immediately in case of any such issue uh, will be there there will be a in charge of that there will be a team for that then optimizing hvac hvac it it cannot be just um, it cannot be just uh, one system all the time there has to be uh, changes because of the climate the the, the surrounding uh, the, the 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 impact of the seasonal changes so all has to be taken care of so optimization of that is important because also the energy concern which we have there right so this is there and then plumbing plumbing services again something which has to be taken care of by the team and then electrical systems to ensure optimal functionality because all the devices will require electric supply cannot break down so and then the occupant comfort that is the maximum important uh, function which has to be maintained and so who will be responsible for that so building engineer will be responsible building engineer and the team will be responsible for this aspect then we have mall managers now mall managers are tasked with overseeing the physical aspects uh, of malls and retail centers uh, mall managers play a critical role in maintaining the overall appeal safety and functionality of these commercial spaces they coordinate various activities such as maintenance security tenant relations and marketing efforts to create an inviting and vibrant shopping environment so somebody who is there uh, overseeing specific physical aspects of mall retail centers mall managers play a critical role so they are somebody who are there at the site working and taking the decision immediately so they have to be very closely watching all the activities so and the maintenance security tenant relation so there is has to be a coordination amongst these different activities who will coordinate amongst them so the role of coordination here will be of mall mall uh, managers mall managers if you are talking about mall management so in mall uh, uh, these different uh, activities who will be coordinating amongst them so that role will be played by the mall manager then we have construction managers so charge with overseeing property improvements and construction projects construction managers ensure that quality workmanship is maintained throughout the development process so now we move on to the construction side so the construction side has to be there uh, continuously because construction related maintenance construction related fixtures uh, they also have to be maintained developed and somebody has to be responsible for that so who is responsible for that aspect so construction manager comes into the picture so from planning and budgeting to scheduling and supervision they play a vital role in the executing executing projects on time within budget and to the desired specifications so that is important two last points which are there that is um, this budget and the specifications 
so the quality of uh, of the uh, uh, work comes from the specification and the budget aspect that is what what is the uh, the maximum we have uh, for a particular task is being budgeted through a specific uh, set of uh, you know numbers uh, some some budget has been given so adherence to that following that budget is done by these construction managers so they are responsible for overall construction related aspects of the building and in no way they should be disrupted so that role will be done by construction manager so collectively these professionals contribute significantly to property maintenance improvement and value enhancing efforts by leveraging their expertise and experience they help optimize the performance and longevity of real estate assets thereby ensuring their continued success in the market then we move on to another aspect of facility management now facility managers play a critical role in ensuring the smooth operations of workplaces across various sectors including public non profit and private entities here's an overview of their responsibilities and roles so managing people so facility managers are responsible for over uh, seeing personal with the workplace including hiring training scheduling supervising staff members they ensure employees have the necessary resources and support to perform their duties effectively fostering a productive and collaborative work environment managing equipment facility managers oversees the maintenance repair and replacement of equipment machinery within the workplace they develop they uh, develop so basically uh, they develop uh, uh, certain processes for this and so in they are ensuring safety compliance such other things then we move on to real estate executives and brokerage services so there are real, real estate executives doing uh, uh, certain supervisory roles managing multiple real estate managers properties and then we have brokerage services providing expertise in buying selling real estate assets so brokerage service we can very well understand basically deals in broking the services then administrative personnel uh, uh, providing essential support in real estate management firms they are basically doing the administrative task roles include reception office managers filing clerks all these areas and then we come to certain specific responsibilities we have been uh, talking about them but let's now summarize the responsibilities so financial management so handling bank accounts income expenses ensuring compliance with financial obligations reporting providing accurate and timely report to ownership communicating property performance financial status that is very much part of the real estate manager's job general property management advertising vacancies executing leases hiring supervising staff this is there then financial management what is their part of financial management so bank account details establishing and maintaining separate accounts for property funds that is there collection of income rent collection fee management ensuring timely payment of expenses that is there then payment of expenses managing debt services and operating cost disbursing funds according to agreed upon terms then audits owners right to audit accounts for transparency and accountability so th there are these are the some of the terms which like we have been discussing these these are all part of the financial management bank account details collection of income payment of the expenses the audit the timely checking of the accounts so all that is there and then reporting to the owner ultimately reporting all this to the owner so monthly managers report components statements of the operations income and disbursement so there has to be a proper reporting mechanism monthly weekly there can be different ways in which we have to report so statement of the operations what have been done income disbursement all this will be part of the reporting narrative report of property operations so uh, how the uh, operations have been conducted so there will be a narrative report for that budget variances and performance an analysis so if there is some uh, specific aspect which have been you know varied from what we budgeted so that has to be properly reported so these all things will be reported to the owners because they are ultimately the the owning these properties and they have to be timely informed of any such 
variances. Then general property of management, we have been dis discussing that. So, activity describes in the management agreement, advertising vacancies and executive leases, staffing, payroll administration, maintenance, oversight. So, basically overall, overall management of the properties. And then of course, there are certain legal and ethical considerations, always have to un work in the best interest of the owner, uh, laws and regulation have to be always followed, very, very important need to be adhered to. In the end, we can see that all this was discussed in this particular class, where we discuss about the roles of different type of property managers and uh, that was there. In the next class, we will uh, uh, you know, discuss another important issue related to real estate management. Thank you.